Hello, welcome to the Seeking Heaven channel, and we have Seeker Speak live. And again, we have the incredible Preston Denton. Let me tell you a little bit about him, and I'll bring him on. Preston is an expert in UFO and and alien uh, information research and the paranormal. So he has been at this 35 plus years. He's uh, also a field investigator for MUFON. He is an author of 27 books on this topic, um, as well as he's written sci-fi books. And he's had over 100 articles in UFOs, uh, magazines, and the paranormal. And he's also working on his 28th uh, book. I mean, he's amazing. I don't know how he does all this. It, I, it, I've got to get my one book done after seeing his 28. It's really impressive. So, but he's written articles in magazines such as Fate, Atl Atlantis Rising, Move on UFO Journal, Nexus, Paranormal Magazine, UFO Magazine, as well as Ufologist, Phenomena Magazine, as let's see, Outer Limits Magazine. It's in several different languages, articles and books. He's also been on numerous radio and TV shows, and his research has also been presented in newspapers such as LA Times, uh, as well as LA Daily News, the, da the Dallas Morning News, and many, many other newspapers. And he's taught classes on this subject, and he is here uh, tonight for us to go over some more questions because this topic is just so extensive. So welcome back, Preston. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Hey, my pleasure. Thanks for having me back. Yeah, this is fun. Yeah. Oh, it is fun. I mean, I love this topic because it is so mind expansive and I love your um your thoughts on far as the there's so many uh what did you say a parade of alien species. I love that word parade because it makes you think, "Wow, I'd like to see that parade." <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's it. You're like, "Wow, there's good costumes. It's not a costume." Uh, <laughs> And that, that mainly that what you found through your 35 plus years in research is that they're here to study in a benevolent, loving way um, our species and also the, the crossover with human, hu humanoid or humans with humanoid or DNA to be a part of that. So to actually to help to help us to make like you were saying we live we live longer now but they're part of us in terms of not just you i think that uh you know mostly what you hear when you see tv shows is oh they're going to take over the world and how bad but you're saying from what you've learned your conclusions are that they that these different species are here you said to help and to heal um do you want to make a comment about that yeah yeah i think most are not all uh but uh i think that they do seem to be very interested in us and our emotions, uh, which, you know, the main emotion is love. And I can tell you uh, unequivocally that some people have had very loving experiences with what we would term gray ETs. And in fact, have told me that it was, they'd never felt this kind of unconditional love from anyone. Uh, mm -hmm. So, yeah, this can be a wonderful, loving experience. It's not always, uh, but often it is. I, I'm not here to say that Space Brothers are here to solve all our problems because <laughs> I don't think that's what's going on. Um, but they are here to help. They're here to wake us up. That's us, up to us to solve our own problems. Uh, but they are absolutely have an agenda to wake us up to our own spirituality, our spiritual heritage, our what I would call superhuman abilities. They're not superhuman. Yeah. Uh, we have the ability to go out of body, to you know, predict the future, our you know, precognition, astral travel, past life recall, levitation. Humans have the ability to fly. Honest to God, we do. Uh, oh, wow. There are a lot. I wrote a book on that, human levitation. And <laughs> really did you I did, <laughs> I did not see that one really yeah it's one of my faves oh man because i couldn't believe <laughs> there's so much I, haven't, I have i haven't succeeded okay. but i've talked to people who have and there's an enormous amount of evidence i mean it's been proven in a laboratory setting i don't think people know that but it it has um multiple more than once multiple times wow. uh, well don't so, they say that some of the yogis that they can do that the more advanced yogis yeah but it's certainly not limited to yogis or you know nuns and saints and medicine men and so on uh, there are accounts involving housewives and businessmen really? little children 
It happens quite a bit with children, actually. Uh, wow. So, yeah, we have all these abilities. We, we are so connected. Like I said, the power of the universe is within us. It really is. There's, we are unlimited. The only Definitely. real limitation we have is ourselves. Skepticism and fear mm -hmm. is what holds a lot of people back. Um, but right. Most people, I mean, and, you know, and, and I think that like layers of an onion, we, we become more aware and more aware, the more we're able to, uh, accept things outside of our own, uh, our own reality, our own upbringing, our own, I mean, and some of it's not fault of, you know, our own fault. It's just how that we are, um, you know, everybody comes from somewhere. So it's just being more open to that. And it's not always, it's not always easy. It's funny. You're talking about limitation because I had a dream the other night and said, now you're going to be so light as a feather. You're going to be lifting off the bed and I don't want you to be afraid. And I was like, what was that? I'm like, will it feel good? Like a magic carpet? They go, I guess it just feel really light. And I was like, okay. <laughs> 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 that was interesting. So and that was just recent. I was like, Ooh, so it's funny. You're mentioning levitation, but yeah, why not? You know, and sometimes we, when we think about the paranormal, or, or supernatural, I call it super wonderful, is that, you know, people automatically assume that it's something dark or demonic, but I've seen, you know, amazing, beautiful things that are considered supernatural, but are uh, magical, but it, they're just not scary. They're different. So, and you're also a paranormal investigator. So I know you definitely uh, know the difference and you, you ghost hunt. When did you have time? This, did, that's something you did in the past. Yeah, I had to because I wanted to understand what's going on here. And I think, you know, it's connected to these various phenomena, whether it's Bigfoot or ghosts and near death experiences or channeling or UFOs. They all have a certain relationship with each other. So, yeah, I did some major ghost hunting, wrote a couple of books on ghosts and uh, um, saw some myself. I like to dive deep. You know, I, I don't want to just research UFOs. I want to see them myself. You want to, you want to experience it. <laughs> Yeah. Really? So what was it? Was it, uh, I mean, what, how did you, was it a graveyard? Was it a historical place? I mean, how did, I mean, how, where did you have the ghost experience? Uh, well, my first one was shortly after my mom passed away. Um, that was way back in 1984 and really opened me up. I was skeptical and I saw her, uh, ghost at oh. the service and, um, thought I was lost my mind. I thought, oh, well, you know, I must really be grief stricken because there she is <gasps> in full color right in front of me. Was she, young, was she younger? Like people say they see, was she younger? Or looked the same or? Uh, she looked the same in this case, though. Later, when I went out of body and saw her, she was so young and so gorgeous. And for that matter, so was I. I had all my hair came back, <laughs> which, Aww. oh, I miss. I had such beautiful hair <laughs> as a oh, young man oh. i miss my hair <laughs> oh that's so Not cute lie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's what well, that's an ability we need to learn how to grow hair you know <laughs> or have thicker hair my yeah my hair used to be way thick but i don't i don't know if i want all that but that's funny so uh, did she interact with you when you saw her oh yeah she took me on a whole tour of what, what you know i would call the heavenly realms gorgeous i mean you cannot be in a bad mood on the other side and the on the upper realms i mean i have been to yeah. the low, lower realms which are oof, low vibration and it's uh right. you know what i guess you might turn the hellish realms i mean it's not right. not fun uh and uh yeah you want to tell us why you think i mean i asked if hell is real i asked jesus that so is hell's real and three months later, he actually answered me in detail, and it was not what I thought. He said that there are some people that um, that um, basically have a bad attitude, and they still want to continue the stuff they did over there, you know, here, like, you know, if they, did, you know, were bad cannibals or whatever, they still want to continue. They take pleasure from these strange things because they're sick in their minds. And he said that they want to continue to do these or, you know, like the polter guys that are really, uh, you know, kind of turn it evil. They just want to do these things. And so he said he, you know, that they're there because that's where their mind is and they're with other people like them. So that's just their kind of tone level where they are. So wh what did your mom tell you or what did you see? What was your, I mean, people want to know about that. And I don't think you, it's a, oh, it's a bad place you go. Oh, you're no. bad. You're there. I think it's a, that's your mental state. What yeah. Do you, what do you get? Yeah, I agree. I think most people are not going to have any problem 
uh, when you pass away, you're brought right up to the heavenly realms and it's gorgeous. It's just beautiful nature and flowers and mm -hmm. the air sparkles and you can feel the divine energy and it's glorious. We have, mm -hmm. I mean, they're what we would call superhuman abilities are normal. You fly, you teleport, there's telepathy. Mm -hmm. You can do telekinesis. All mm -hmm. of that is normal. Yes. It's, it, um, it's not paranormal, it's normal. Paranormal is a misnomer. Um, mm -hmm. It's just something that we don't quite understand, so we call it not normal. Mm -hmm. But it is, it is. And once we understand it, I think we'll change our terminology. And uh -huh. uh, most people do go right there up to the very high vibration of what we would call the astral realms, I guess. But there are lower realms, and uh, I didn't explore those at first. <laughs> Uh, but I've you know heard I read all the books on OBEs and astral travel. I'm like, well, some of these people are doing this, and if they can do it, I can do it. And mm -hmm. uh, so I I went there, and yeah, um, there are lower vibrating realms where people are having a hard time working through their issues. There are people who are earthbound, and this happens to people who uh, are perhaps addicted to drugs or alcohol or just have a real bad attitude. <laughs> Uh, or mm -hmm. might not know that they've died and are just, yeah. for whatever reason, earthbound. Mm -hmm. This is a big problem, actually. And if you start yeah. doing astral travel, the chances are you're going to be uh, brought in to help lost spirits because it's hard for the higher realm spirits to even get their attention. And if you're vibrating, you're if you're right. on Earth at a lower realm, they can see you more easily. But even then, that you try to get right. their attention, and they don't—they don't look at you. And, you know, it's just a lot of, you know, I don't think hell is what people think it is. I'm, I'm, yeah, you can create any environment you want, and if you feel like you deserve to be dipped in a lake of fire, well, please don't. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, not, because mm. because you know people w will create uh, yeah. that sort of thing just because they feel so unworthy. Uh, yeah. perhaps they, perhaps people have committed awful crimes and they feel like they need to do you know car, you know karmic makeup i guess you might call it or um go through some punishment and they will put themselves through that uh but it's a way of sort of burning through bad karma i think uh and it's not necessarily necessary uh, often right. people have that sort of problem they're just brought up to the higher realms and put into sort of a rehab or a hospital um, type environment on the other side. Right. Uh, Therapy. That, yeah. So don't worry. Therapy. There, is, <laughs> there is life after death. I've been <laughs> there myself. My mom took me on a tour of the heavenly realms and to some really higher realms. And man, I like heard about the Akashic library. Yeah. I'm like, let's try that. And according yeah. to, you know, some Eastern schools of thought, there are d various dimensions and planes. There's the astral plane, there's the causal plane, the mental plane, the buddhic plane. I forget the terms, but the Akashic is supposed to be a pretty high vibrating realm. It took me a while to get there. And uh, boy, when I broke through, there's little sort of barriers, I guess you might call them. Yeah, little like little walls. Yeah, like uh, different vibrations and tunnels and right. you know, corridors you walk through. There's, all about that on the other side and uh yeah when i finally got broke through to that i could feel every all the bad thoughts in me just filter out because you know i'm human i have mm -hmm. I, you know i thought i worked through my anger issues and i'm you know, i rarely get angry but <laughs> yeah when you go through to these higher realms oh it, it feels good <laughs> yeah. wow and it's so freeing and it's so wonderful and that's where i learned about all my past lives they were showing me all my past lives. I'm like, wow, there's a lot of them. <laughs> Slow down. I'm like, wow, this is crazy. Yeah. yeah, so much fun. And my mom would just sit back and smile and watch me. <laughs> uh, wow. and taught me all mm -hmm. kinds of stuff. And so I've met her many times. And for that matter, I've had a number of people who've passed away. I had a friend who died of alcoholism. It was very sad, very tragic. And I met him on the other side. And he was on a lower realm. And it was all dark, and he was screaming. And he's like, I'm not ready. Ah, he was having a hard time. And I just, oh dear. Did you I'm help like, him? I did. I'm like, you know, Roger, Roger, it's going to be fine. It's me. I'm here for you. You're going to be fine. And I sent him love and love and love. And I 
went out of body sometime later, just spontaneously. This sometimes happens. You can do it at will if you want to get good at it. But mm -hmm. I met him again and he was at a higher realm, but it still wasn't quite <laughs> where yeah. I would normally meet people who pass away, like your pets and all, you know, all deceased loved ones usually go right up to these, this real high vibrating realm. Yeah. yeah. But it took Towards him a while to get there and I, he finally got there. Did he? Or it's the pretty pasture. That's what it's the pretty pasture, the beautiful colors, oh, the flowers, every, yeah. everything smells good. Everything's the perfect day. The grass feels like silk under your feet. Yeah. It's just, just wonderful. It's just like, could not be more perfect. You've been there. I can tell. <laughs> love, love, love. <laughs> yeah. The colors. Oh, the colors. The colors. And you can, you know, yeah, I mean, it's weird. You can breathe. You feel like, I don't know, life you're breathing you can breathe in the water there's no pain yeah i love sparkly things now <laughs> because it, it sparkles there in a just oh, really amazing God. way <laughs> this is so cool you said because i'm obsessed with sparkles i even had people call me sparkles i've had people call me glam lamb i love glitter <laughs> I to craig come boston we and i don't know what this came up and i said uh, something about um i said yeah and i was talking about people talk about near-death experiences the white light i said but mine's like gold with glitter is just like whitish gold with glitter it's got this, this he said cosmic particles called whatever i went yeah and he goes and we started talking i don't know who said it first but we started laughing i said cosmic glitter i said oh my god i want that as a name cosmic glitter <laughs> and then i thought well that sounds sort of like a stripper so maybe i don't want that <laughs> but it does it's got like particles of, of of like shiny stuff and sparkles yeah I, one day i was you know driving down the street you know there's billboards everywhere and signs and they have this new kind of billboard that's lit from within and uh i saw one i'm like whoa because it reminded me of the heavenly realms where everything is composed of light i mean yeah the tre trees glow the flowers glow yeah you're like lit inside and when i saw jesus he was lit inside but he looked really beautiful like everybody looks good there like people said well you can have old people there i'm like really you were like, do you want to be 85 or 25? I mean, I'm yeah. picking 25. I mean, you know, I mean, you can experience anything if you want to, but it seems like a lot of people are picking the younger version of themselves. Yeah. Well, I wanted to meet an enlightened master. That was, I'm like, heard of other people doing that. I'm like, well, you know, I don't think I've ever done that. And uh, turned, I probably had, but didn't quite recognize it. But I'm like, okay, let's do this. And, you know, whenever I pop out of body, I'm like, wow, oh my God, I'm out. This is amazing. Oh my God. And uh, like, what did I want to do? What did I want to do? And I'm wandering around the house and floating and walking through walls and going up and fl floating above the house. I'm like, well, and so I popped out and I'm in my living room. I'm like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, what did I want? I need an enlightened master. And this beautiful woman appears. She's gorgeous. She's wearing this sparkly gown. And she comes up to me and she smiles. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you're so beautiful. <laughs> And she, and uh, so this is what, like I said, I want to meet an enlightened master. And she appears and she says, okay. And she grabs my arm and she says, keep your eyes opened. And she pulled me really hard, it scared me. <laughs> and I closed my eyes for just a second and I instantly opened them because, you know, she told me to. And she's depositing me in this field on the other side. And I recognized it as, you know, the other side because there's just, just a certain energy of it. Yeah. And uh, there's it's a grass field, you know, forest around. and. There was a man in this wooden chair floating about two inches above the ground. He looked old. He had a look very much like Obi Wan Kenobi <laughs> from <laughs> Alec Guinness. I mean, and uh, just radiated this intelligence and wisdom. And uh, they put me right in front of him. And I'm like, fell to the ground a little bit. I'm like, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. <laughs> Feeling. Uh, so I yeah. sort of knelt down. I couldn't help it. Uh, and uh, he was very stoic. Very, you know, wasn't a super yeah. like jo jovial, funny guy. Yeah, uh, not Buddha. <laughs> which, which some are, but uh, he wasn't. Yeah. And uh, he just looked at me and gave me this really interesting message. And it was very curious. He says, and he what spoke. Out, yeah, he spoke out loud. Um, this was not telepathic, which it usually is on the other side. Uh, he spoke out loud, punctuating each word. Um, and he said. Gave me some advice. He said, when you do something, do it absolutely. And I said, what? <laughs> and this tunnel appeared and sucked me through the down into another dimension and then down, 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 down. And each time I had to stop, like 
you'll suddenly you'll be in a lower dimension. You're writing down in your dream journal. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is a dream dream journal. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, this is not my actual physical dream journal. It's, it's, it's a way to step down the memory uh, because you can lose. It's hard to bring down the information sometimes. It is. You forget. And I finally woke up. I'm like, am I really awake? Am I really? And I wrote it down. I'm like, what is it? I remembered the message. And I had to really meditate on it and ponder about it. And uh, I finally just looked, because this is a weird way to use the word absolutely. It's like, do you absolutely do something would be an adverb, but he kind of used it or an adjective or whatever. But a verb. Uh, he used it um, like a verb. And I actually had to write it down. There it is. Wow. Um, so absolutely means without attachment, without condition, um, without limitation, completely, positively. Wow, that's so that, powerful. Right? Because it's all about, you know, if you, listen, if you read the writings of enlightened masters and stuff, they all talk about attachment and the dangers of attachment and yeah. how important it is to have a positive attitude. Now, the power of positive thinking <laughs> is right. a true thing and so it's a really yeah. wonderful message that had layers and layers of meaning to it that took me a while to unravel well but, that's one thing oh. about the uh, ascended masters oh who's that is that your mom yeah that's my mom she's <laughs> that, gorgeous yeah this is how she looks on the other side actually a little wow. younger does so, she have green eyes yeah yeah she does she's so, beautiful was she okay <laughs> i'm curious was she a nurse uh, no, he wasn't, but she had six kids and uh, was very nurturing. And okay, very nurturing. Okay. Taught me love. You know, my dad taught me power. <laughs> my dad taught me you can do anything. Yeah. And my mom taught me the power of love. Wow, uh, that's and, beautiful. Uh, she had how many kids? Six. I'm number five. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. No, no, let me tell you why. You're like, why did what did I say that? Uh, I really don't have, you know, psychic tricks or anything. Um, is I always use this example when I'm talking psychic or medium, and you know, medium is like you're having a conversation and you're like, wow, I didn't know that. Okay. And you find out later, yeah. Whereas psychic, you're just kind of reading their mind, possibly, or what have you. She's exactly the example of a woman I have with dark hair and green eyes who's loving and blah blah blah. And it looks just like her. The example that I use, and that's why I asked mm -hmm. that. I said she's kind and nurturing and like a caregiver, and I said she could possibly be in her. But I always give this fictitious example, but the person I, it's it looks like her. Yeah, she she did, I wasn't a nurse by training, but uh, yeah, absolutely had to do that, and was actually a counselor. You know, so oh, wow. that wow. that fits. She was a marriage, family, child counselor. Wow. Well, she's, she's a beautiful lady. It seems like she's, she's probably still around you quite a bit being, I'll call them helpers. Maybe they're not our main guide, but they're definitely, you know, right there being, you know, one of our instructors or teachers with this that are like that and how beautiful it is that, that we all decided this before we even got here in between lives. Like who's going to do what? Yeah. I think I'm going to cry because I feel her laughing. <laughs> the order the order of things there's such an order yeah. to things and you know it's uh it's uh <laughs> she, i have to say this and we're just gonna digress here but she's like she said you she said uh you came in you came in different it's what she's saying <laughs> i guess compared to the others that you were the most unique and the most inquisitive and asked the most questions of anybody. Yeah, I, I remember that I was nine years old. I'm like, mom, what's infinity? <laughs> she gave me this look. <laughs> oh gosh. He's, he's number, remember number five. He's the trouble. <laughs> we need to save up for special school for this one. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. She said, keeping up with your activities was, um, was, was uh was something so you were a uh what do you call a scout you were a scout um yeah i guess you would call that yeah, yeah i was always a, very inquisitive you know oh no i mean like a scout you know the little uniforms as a kid oh like a scout. Uh, oh like no one of those, no i or, never I don't know. You, she showed me some kind of outdoor thing and when you would have uh, achievements and awards. So I don't know if they called it. Oh, I, I know I was a brownie. <laughs> I don't tell a lot of people that I was a brownie. I was a green scout. Um, but something where you were involved with uh, and also ex uh, groups with experiments where you would run experiments. Kind of like you'd almost like science project with volcanoes and different things. 
Um, but um, she was talking about you were always uh, wanting to figure stuff out. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I did have a little chemistry set. That was fun, and I'm very inquisitive. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we were very outdoorsy, so, you know, bringing all kinds of stuff uh, in. And, yeah, uh, I knew I, I knew I had a mission from a very early age. Uh, I, I won a poetry contest at age, you know, in grade school, and I got first place. I was so excited, and I knew right then and there what I was going to be writing. Well, was, you have. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Wow. I mean, your books, I mean, 20, I mean, you're on number 28, which he says, the wondrous 25 true UFO encounters, which is firsthand experiences. That's unreal. That's your firsthand experience, right? Uh, no, I haven't written about my own experiences yet. And I'm oh. certainly willing to talk about them, but uh, okay. have had a number of UFO encounters. Um, I, I, I wrote about my out-of-body stuff, but the UFO stuff, I'm still waiting to have a fully conscious onboard encounter. <laughs> Uh, oh. But I feel like I'm close. I'm having UFO dreams that are, I'm like, oh, gosh, wow. I think I'm on board a UFO. <laughs> I really oh, do. Wow. Well, and it's so funny because, uh, I mean, you know, I, you know, I'm a near-death experiencer, a multiple near-death experiencer. And, you know, I have, um, you know, also channel and I'm a professional evidential psychic medium. I was born this way, but also trained because I want to make sure I was, you know, had evidence, which we didn't really do a full reading because that, you know whatever we're <laughs> recording. Uh, but, uh, you know, but yeah, I would give evidence and all that, but, um, but yeah, I have dreams about these things too. And now I'm like, are these dreams? So maybe talk about, um, cause we were talking about when you think of a alien encounter, you think about people that are taken out of their beds at night when they're sleeping and they have medical experiments done to them, but you're saying that's one thing, but there are other ways that you could have contact with them. Um, and then the whole reason why they might be interested in you is something else. But um, talk about the different ways, because the out of body experience, you, we were talking about, I didn't realize that if you're out of body or not astral travel like crazy all the time, uh, but how you can, you know, like you said, you can meet uh, um, spirits, right? And depending what level you are astral traveling, which I have before. I have. I actually had five of them come to me as a group and ask me to help them. And they showed me the hell they were experiencing. And they it was very detailed. I wrote it all down, extremely detailed. It was like a movie. What wow. each one was experiencing and how they couldn't get out of their personal thing and they wanted to cross over. And uh, and I usually that's not my, usually I don't do that. It's not my job because there's a lot of vibration. And I'm like, okay, if you're willing to do this, no funny play. <laughs> no weird funny play. I'll, I'll help you. And then, you know, and I'll kind of be a guide and we'll bring in the angels and do that. But that's one thing, but you could also say that, uh, have an OBE with, uh, some type of alien encounter. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. If you start doing astral travel at some point, you probably will be inducted into saving some lost souls because that's a problem. And, uh, you know, I read about it. I'm like, Hey, I've never done that. And found out I probably already was, but did rescue some lost souls. And as far as ET encounters, yeah, ET contact uh, is not all about being abducted by greys and physically examined and this sort of thing. There's a huge wide spectrum and they contact people in a number of different ways. I think depending on what your mission is on earth, or what you know you need to learn about or what their agenda is. And uh, people, writers i think often are inspired by ets and never really realize they are having contact um because that's just not what their need to know they don't need to know that um so i think a lot of people just have pure telepathic contact and that's it mm -hmm. um, people will have a simple sighting they think it's a simple sighting but no <laughs> if you see a ufo um they know it they are showing themselves to you on purpose often just say, hey, hello, we're real. You should know this. You need to know this. Uh, but they will give you down what you know are now known as downloads. Mm -hmm. uh, people will get all kinds of information, which helps guide them on their life path. Um, so they can contact people, no kidding. And I wrote about this in one of my books, not from here, through the telephone. <laughs> And this no, is wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I know. I, I kind of cringe. <laughs> yes. I, what do I you cringe. mean? You mean like, uh, I mean, they're like, they're like, hey, really? Okay. Yeah. I'm ready. Give me the download. Let me get my paper and pen. 
like that? Yes. And I, and I know how this sounds, but I f first heard about this, you know, Bud Hopkins talked about it. Her, his client, Debbie Jordan, was receiving these phone calls and there would be weird voices and clicking and and yeah. uh, and all this stuff. And and uh, boy, it, this happened to, you know, Raymond Fowler, who did Betty Andreessen's case. She had that same experience, too. And I'm like, really? Yeah, and the ETs talked to her. <laughs> And uh, I, just, I had a guy too, this guy in upstate New York had the same experience, his cell phone rings. And, and uh, he had it set to a certain song and I, it was just beeping and doing all these weird tones it can't do. <laughs> and he looked at it and it said, it said, no such number. And he ignored it and it kept ringing, ringing, finally answers it. And here's these voices and says, we are coming, the time is soon. Click. <laughs> So does and, that mean just and, for him, or does this mean for all of us, or what? Or they use the, re, the or they mainly for personal, him. personal. It was huh. for him, yeah. And he had an encounter shortly later. This happened to Jack Sarfati, a world leading physicist, quantum physicist. As a child, he received a series of phone calls. He remembers the first one, and it was this alien who said he was on board a flying saucer, and he needed to talk to Jack, who was just a little kid. <laughs> Oh and, and he's like, do you want to see a UFO? And Jack's like, yeah, sure. <laughs> and and uh, that little boy does it. Yeah. And so they set up this time and place and uh, Jack invited all his friends to see this UFO, which didn't appear. And uh, Jack told this story and, and uh, his mom heard it. And, she, and she's like, you know, that wasn't just one phone call that they kept calling you all summer. And she got really concerned because here's this, her little son, and he starts talking about stars and astronomy and quantum physics and mathematics and really adult cosmic concepts. And so yeah. she caught him on the phone one day and she ran up to her and grabs the phone and says, stop calling my son, <laughs> click. And that was the last call. Uh, but he's now you know, talking about concepts about you know, the Einstein-Rosen bridge and time travel and mm -hmm. simultaneous time and you know, quantum entanglement. And, and yeah, he's gone forward and talks about this publicly. Uh, and this is one of many cases. And this is how there's a broad spectrum of contact. And certainly dreams are a very powerful method that the ETs use. Because I think a lot of people would be feel traumatized by being physically contacted. And the right. dream state is a wonderful way to do it or the out of body state. And a lot of dreams are actually half remembered out of out of body experiences right they, and they you're astral traveling really, really right. we, we all astral travel every night I'm, oh yeah i'm convinced of this and i think a lot of other obe guys are um we all go to the other side we plan our day out we go to very high realms we you know we touch the godhead sort of each yeah and every evening and uh come back and often you know you'll have dreams like gosh i was in another place or you'll meet your deceased loved ones in dreams and you can meet ETs in dreams. And they love to do this because it's a very easy way to contact people. And uh, yeah, and they're more advanced. They're more at a higher vibrational level, more a higher consciousness. So they can do this is a normal thing for them. Yeah. ET contact comes in a wide, wide variety of forms. They'll blink lights. You know, they will, you know, people will he hear telepathic messages. i um, like, as I mentioned, and, yeah, channelers ET. channelers exactly. yep. right i mean and and you know that's why uh you know and some people you know there is okay fear you know some people are fearful but at the same time it's also trusting in yourself you know when something feels creepy versus where something feels well that's different well okay <laughs> that's you you know, you know what i mean there's a difference like how magical that's different versus actually <laughs> actually scary so i think that if we're a little bit more open we can you know we should trust ourselves and our own discernment a little bit more yeah fear is a teacher fear come all emotions come from love and fear can't really exist if you're surrounded by love um, mm. and uh if you can pull yourself into the love vibration the universe is safe the very worst thing that could happen to you is passing away. I think that's what we think. <laughs> and passing yeah. away, you know, dying is absolutely the most wonderful experience. <laughs> Just, yeah, as if, if you study near-death experiences, it's wonderful. It's, it's 
the other side is it's a beautiful healing healing realm and this is good news for us that we are have a limited time here uh, because right. going to the other side is wonderful <laughs> it's so wonderful and uh, pulls us out and heals of, of all the trauma we've you know gone through in our lives and this is why it's so good to recall past lives because often yeah. we carry trauma from life to life yes and if you can true. remember it it's healing 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 so yeah be have no fear the universe is safe it can't hurt you yes we have to experience pain and sorrow and loss uh but fear is just a, a lower vibration and if you can shift into love and just fear is yes. a way of reminding us perhaps that we might be in danger like when i'm driving along sometimes i'll get a real strong you know mm -hmm. feeling of fear or like oh my oh my god what's I, i'm feel, i'm getting danger signals yeah. yeah. there was a car accident right in front of me i just oh. had time to swerve i'm like oh thank god because i was my right. attention was like okay pay attention both hands on the wheel look around <laughs> Boom. I'm like, what are you? Oh. But see, that was that was uh that was to warn you. And that was it's just like some people go, Oh, I'm going to this party or I'm you know, and I'm feeling this sense of dread and I don't know why. You know, you don't go, A, or if you do, be be cautious. And you know, there may be something as simple as creepy people there and you need to leave. But I think that's part of our mechanism is to say, hey, stay alert, like with you. I don't yeah. think it's a bad thing. No, I, I studied. Listen to it. I studied all my dreams, and I wrote on every dream I ever had, and I studied other people's dreams, and I realized 70, 80 percent of people's dreams are either their fears or their desires, which we largely suppress. So it's very, very therapeutic and helpful and spiritually advancing to realize your desires. You know, fa face your right. fears. If you have a fear of whatever mm -hmm. spiders or you know clowns. <laughs> Um, oh, here we go, the clown. <laughs> <laughs> because one of your books is on alien clowns. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I, I wrote a chapter. You can't make this up. <laughs> the alien clown connection. Yeah. I wrote that, about that in a chapter of Not From Here, which is all about, you know, weirder UFO encounters. And this is a thing. Chlorophobia is fear of clowns. It's very common in our society. And it's now a question. It's a question I ask contactees. I'm like, how do you feel about clowns? And uh, the first, you know, I first reali realized this when I was reading some of Bud Hopkins' work. And he's, he's like, a lot of my clients have a fear of clowns. And I'm like, ding, 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 because uh, I talked to a lady who uh, said that an ET came to her dressed as a clown. Actually, more than one person. I've had this yeah. turn up yeah. a couple of times. I'm like, what's going on? One lady had a clown, a harlequin, appear next to her bed. Next thing she knows, mm. she's being pulled on board. Well, that does and, sound uh, a little creepy. Uh, but it makes you think of, what is it, that movie, uh, Killer Clowns from Outer Space? I mean, like, <laughs> yeah. hey, maybe there's something to that. <laughs> why there would they is. do that? Um, I mean, why? I, I figured it out. I think, well, my first thought was screen memory. No, no. You know, because sometimes people are left with a screen memory of, and they'll have an ET encounter and what they remember is seeing an owl or a deer or something but sometimes ets they don't want to scare people i okay. think they look looked at our culture and like well kids love clowns let's dress <laughs> up as a clown and i'm not sure it was very effective <laughs> but uh because it's left a lot of people with this awful fear of clowns and yeah I, I see it i mean i saw on tv this one lady was so she passed out she'll pass out if she sees a clown and i really wanted to ask her if she's ever seen a ufo <laughs> you know and I brought this up at a UFO support meeting. Uh, this yeah. was at, at Barbara Lamb's UFO support meeting. I'm like, how do you guys feel about clowns? And they erupted. I mean, I set off an atom bomb. You're like, no, no, <laughs> no on the clowns. Yeah, they screamed. <laughs> like, oh, wait, wait, come on. You know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, well, uh, so are they trying to be de de deceptive? And I wanted to go through the different purposes because you there's different ways. I'm gonna, gosh, there's so much to cover that you were mentioning the schoolyard, there's there's there different reasons, but it's not just all medical uh, experiments and the medical experiments are not just for them. What you were saying is that, especially with the grades, if they need some of our, uh, th they used to be human, didn't you say? And they wanna learn from yep. us and be more like that and especially emotional. Is that what you were saying? That's one of the reasons? 
Yeah, yeah, these are not experiments. They're practicing medicine. They are, um, but going back to the clown thing real quick, they dress up as other things. They dress up as really? teddy bears, superheroes, Barbie dolls. Uh, no, what, Barbie dolls? Um, cowboys. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll come in a pinstripe suit. Had a couple of cases of that. Whitley Strieber talked about that. It's just a way to That's sort of right. reduce the fear factor. It's not deceptive. They're not trying to deceive people. They can be a little evasive in their answers. Like, where do you come from? They might not want to tell you because, you know, they're protective. Uh, we're a very violent species. Uh, and uh, I think they're concerned about that. Mm. Um, but uh, right. as far as, you know, uh, medical experiments, I think that's not quite the right term. I'm not going to say that doesn't happen uh, because I think there is an element where that does happen. They have, you know, experimented. Um, right. Like I heard one horrific case where a lady went through p what she termed as pain threshold tests. They wanted to see how much pain she could withstand. Oh, God. I've heard of that. Right. So I'm like, oh, my God, that's and, terrible. And then you've got that. here a picture. This is a drawing from your sister-in-law. What's her name? Uh, Kisara, Christine Kis Kisara. Yeah, this was a, 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 a guy who had suffering from angioma. Angioma is a malformation of the blood vessels of the brain mm -hmm. and uh, can often a chronic condition. And he was deteriorating quickly. He had was losing his vision, losing the ability to speak, mm -hmm. the ability to walk. Uh, it looked like he was going to pass away and mm -hmm. was taken on board a craft and they removed the top of his skull and started put putting these pencil thin lasers into on his you know blood vessels in his brain and shrinking them down and uh he came back and he's like you know people came into my room people came to my room and, uh, he was telling his parents uh and they were you know concerned but uh also happy because his condition rapidly reversed Doctors were absolutely shocked. They couldn't understand it. They wanted to do exploratory surgery on his brain because this was impossible. Yeah. This, this is not supposed to happen. But eat, you know, chronic disease, that's another misnomer. It, chronic disease is really another term of saying, well, we don't understand how to cure this, <laughs> um, is what you know, doctors are really saying here. And that's why we have so much to learn from these guys. Uh, and they do a lot of healing with lights. And we're picking up on that. Like you know, the, this some light apparatus. What is yeah, this? Yeah. They cure diphtheria by just shining a light on you. Um, or multiple sclerosis, uh, rather. A, a person had multiple sclerosis, which is a you know pretty serious disease. And we don't know how to cure it. Right. And... Uh, they do. They have these amazing machines that can cure people of uh, multiple sclerosis or uh, diabetes, tuberculosis, wow, and uh, all these kinds of, you know, pretty debilitating diseases. One guy, he was cured of kidney stones, and he described the machine to the, uh, mm -hmm. hip, you know, the hypnotherapist he was working with. He didn't remember his encounters, and he was not a happy camper. He didn't like what was happening to him. And he's goes under hypnosis, recalls this exper experience where the ETs are examining him and said, the ETs told him, well, you have these objects in your kidney. Are those supposed to be there? Are those good for you? Do you need them? And he says, no, I don't need them. They're bad. And if you leave them there, I will get very sick. And they said, oh, okay, we'll remove them next time you, we see you. And they did. And he described this machine and uh, he drew it. And uh, the therapist, Constance Clear, she wrote a book about uh, her cases. She brought, brought this drawing to a doctor. And he's like, oh, I know what that is. That's a lith lithography. Or li uh, he knew exactly what it was. It's a machine that they use to break up kidney stones. <laughs> wow. And he so recognized it instantly. Wow. But it's probably a more advanced one, but that, that's, that's crazy. When you think about even um, the light therapy that we have now, people are talking about light therapy, sound therapy, probably something they've been working with for a long time. Yep. They use lights and sounds and uh, in some cases, medicine. And for that matter, in some cases, it's just hands-on healing. One gentleman I talked to, Michael Carter, he's a reverend, uh, 
fights against racism, got an award from President Clinton for this, oh. actually, and uh, was diagnosed with a blood clot in his leg. Doctor was really upset because by the time he went to the doctor, his leg was you know three times its normal size. He says, you should have come in sooner. This is life-threatening. We're putting you on you know, blood thinners and all kinds of medicine, and you're, we're going to have to watch you very closely. <laughs> Uh, but I'm so glad you came in. And uh, he had an experience shortly later where this beautiful human-looking person in a robe um, appeared in his bedroom. Um, what you know, blonde hair, blue eyes, your typical Nordic, I guess, or human-looking, very muscular, walks up to the foot of his bed and holds out his hand, palm forward, and this wow. blue light comes out of his hand and strikes Michael. Gosh, I love Michael. He's such a beautiful man. <laughs> And uh, he was like, oh, my gosh, he's dazed and I'm just amazed and uh, kind of falls asleep, wakes up the next morning and can't wait to tell his family about what happened to his wife and his kids and pulls himself out of bed and looks down at his leg. And it's like, oh, my gosh, <laughs> it, it, both his legs were now the same size. And he quickly got up and examined him, and his veins his, had been rerouted. They weren't in the same place. And no sign of the blood clot. His family was very joyous, and so was he. He goes to the doctor, and the doctor's like, oh, 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 oh. And, and it's like, what happened? And Michael's like, I don't know. He's like, what do you mean you don't know? Something obviously happened. And Michael's like, mm, can't you just be happy for me? Often experiencers don't want to talk about it. Some do. Yeah. Um, but, but often... No, because people have been put in mental institutions. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's a real <laughs> thing. And and you don't want that. No, I I know people have lost their children and were <gasps> horrible. Yeah, the parents were not happy when a new mother said, Oh, I'm in contact with aliens. That's it. We're taking your baby, you're going to a mental institution. And she was an adult, and they still were able to, you know, have her hospitalized against her will. Oh, terrible. See, this is the thing that this work that you're doing and, and, and educating others. I mean, look, you have just mounds of cases that you've been working on for 35 plus years. This can't be all made up from people all over the world, all different stations of life. Yeah. Right. No, we have physical evidence. We know it's not real. I mean, we know it's not not real. <laughs> we know no, it's real. Not, uh, not. It uh, is real. But, uh, <laughs> but we, we get like corroboration from independent witnesses who speak of the same exact details and don't know each other. But mm -hmm. for that matter, like the implant evidence, a number of people have reported implants. And yeah. uh, this is a very scary, weird aspect of UFO encounters. People are like, what are these implants for? They put something inside me. Are they tracking me? Is this mind control? Are they you know, they're erasing my memories? What's going on? Well, I talked to one lady who asked them, what's the purpose of this implant? What are you doing? And they said, oh, this is to measure the level of pollution in your body. And another was told, this is to boost your immune system. And another was told, oh, we monitor your vitals. We, we watch over you. We will always take care of you. And I've heard this over and over again, and I've read this in other cases. So it's not just and tracking device. No, it's not a tracking device. One person asked, and they laughed and said, no, this is not a tracking device. We can find you. Every person has their own uh, imp vibrational imprint, uh, oh. like a fingerprint. And okay. uh, we, do, we don't need that to track you. We know where you are. And I talked to one lady. She had her implant removed and studied by Dr. Roger Lear. These implants are smoking gun evidence. Um, we know yeah. UFOs are real. We have the physical evidence. It's in the public arena. If you don't believe in UFOs, you haven't done your homework. I don't mean to be rude or chide <laughs> anyone, but do your homework. <laughs> do your homework. Well, I mean, <laughs> well, it's, it's back to that belief that, you know, we have things that don't serve us, you know, ways, all of us, me too, you know, get rid of limited beliefs. I, I was actually told that. <laughs> But Jesus is pretty funny. Before the show, he said, "You need to, there's some things you need to work on. You need to be more allowing." And he went through this. Explained, it's pretty bad when you're being told by Jesus. You know, you need to let that go. <laughs> um, um, and, and and I did. I said, "UFOs, Bigfoot." He said, "Yeah, all of it." And not that I didn't. I was really into it. But he's talking about embrace it. You know, going, "Oh, this is fascinating. That's one level." But embracing it 
is a different level, right? Like, okay, I'm surrender. Hey, I want to know. So I think that getting to that point, you're going to find an overwhelming amount of evidence and just it, heck a lot of it's in your books with the cases that you've worked on. Yeah. I love the UFO healing cases because medical evidence is some of the best evidence we have. And uh, I did put a chapter there on injuries um, because that does happen. You know, people have been struck by a beam of light and it caused a radiation sickness or they'll have, a, you know, uh, burns or uh, eye injuries. Uh, um, and not everything is, you know, lollipops and roses, as I said. But o overall, yeah, this is a very positive experience. And some of the medical evidence uh, proves people's cases. There was a lady who was cured of Chagas disease. What's that? It's, it's caused by a bite of the triatamine beetle. And it can cause okay. swelling of the heart and the brain. It can be very tragic and fatal. Uh, and it's a huge problem, particularly in uh, third world countries or uh, underdeveloped countries, I guess you might say. I, I hate that term, uh, yeah. but, but you know what I mean. Yeah. And uh, sh she turned out her, um, she w worked as a housekeeper and uh, her, uh, the family she worked with the guy was in contact with ETs. And so he asked them, and he's like, hey, can you hit, heal? Uh, what was her name? Gosh, I figured her name, Rosa or something. And they're like, yeah, yeah, we'll set up an appointment. And uh, there was a lot of people there. They saw this happen, the whole contact. You know, she left the group and approached this saucer and the, these beings, and they cured her. And the, um, the relatives of this, uh, the, the father, are doing the... Uh, sort of uh, the ufo tour speaking at mm -hmm. conventions and ufo groups and have the before and after medical diagnoses that prove this and you know there's another case where a lady had a tumor um, i actually have my own case of this as well where we've got the before and after x-rays that show this tumor being there and then it's gone tumors don't just disappear just disappear and, and uh, many cases of this that was my first that's what got me involved in looking into ufo healing cases i was interviewing this lady and she's like oh they here killed cured me of a tumor i'm like really she's like yeah i had a tumor in my fallopian tube it was a lot of pain and i was causing me all kinds of problems it was very upsetting me and my boyfriend were like really sad about it mm -hmm. and she went and got an mri was fully diagnosed ready to have surgery and that evening the evening before surgery and this is how they often do it <laughs> I, I call it the last minute phenomena <laughs> Yeah. People on the way to the hospital, they will cure people or in your hospital room. Uh, okay. But uh, they did it the night before. And she's like, hmm, some, you know, she didn't remember exactly what happened, but she knew they came. And she's like, oh, this is, mm, I don't know what's going to happen now when I go to the doctor. <laughs> she, yeah, but, what happened? Did they look at her beforehand or? Yeah, they always do pre-imaging before they do surgery. Okay. And uh, she um, had her pre-imaging done and they came walking in and the person who reads the x-rays is like, okay, <clears throat> I need to talk to you. And uh, I'll call her Wendy. Wendy's like, all right, what? <laughs> she's kind of knowing. And he, she's the lady's like, well, you had surgery. I see you've had surgery. And Wendy says, no, no, I didn't. And the doctor was upset. He's like, well, you're, I think you're lying because uh, th your tumor has gone. And when it's like, oh, really? And the doctor's like, yeah. And in fact, I know you've had surgery because there's only, there's fluid present in your fallopian tube. And that's only present after post-surgical operation. Wow. So, so where did you go? You know, how, why did you go to another doctor? <laughs> you know, and, and she denied it. She said, I didn't do it. I didn't, I didn't. And they looked wow. at her abdomen and there was this laser scar there. <laughs> and they're like, well, oh. what's this? What's this? And she, she's like, I don't know. I don't know. She played dumb. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but she knew what happened. One guy I talked to, you know, he was having not great encounters. I mean, he'd wake up with puncture wounds and stuff. And once he came, woke up with a broken foot Ooh. and, and he told his doctor, like, listen, I'm having ET encounters. I think they're doing it. And the doctor's like, okay, you know, I, I think I believe you because this is very hard to explain. Well, he, at some point was diagnosed with cancer and had this giant tumor on his neck. And it was growing and growing and they're like well you need to have surgery and they lined it up and he had an encounter he had this orb up here he filmed it actually 
he actually filmed this orb come and enter into his chest. I saw the film. I interviewed him, saw his doctor records, and woke up the next, you know, he, he was in bed when that happened, and he fell yeah. asleep, you know, a short time later. Woke up the next morning, you know, and just kind of stumbles in the bathroom, looks in the mirror, and is like, oh, my tumor is gone. Oh, my God. And uh, surgery was one week later, so he goes for surgery anyway. And the doctor's like, oh, my God, you know, what happened? And he told them. And they're like, well, we're going to have to do surgery to remove this necrotic tissue because, you, you know, there's some necrotic tissue here. And they did, but they couldn't find any trace of the cancer at all. Could not find it. So it was a, it was a white uh, orb thing, right? Yep. That yep. heard him. Yep. You know, it's yep. funny. There's a there's a, a a spiritual exercise you can do to kind of visualize. You can either have an angel hand you, but a white orb, and it goes in your body, and it completely heals you. So that's uh, I've heard that before, and you know, not the alien, but the spiritual level too. You know, the beings of light give you like a light ball, and then it clears you out and and heals you. So that's that's interesting too. Um, uh, I wanted to go into the area about you're talking about UFO encounters to could be could be through journeying, through dreams, through also physically, but also you were talking about that there are other phenomena like visiting in the schoolyard, hospitals, uh, in person, in your backyard. <laughs> it could be essentially anywhere, and which goes on to say why are they interested in us? And and uh, I love what you said that there is a unity there that there, there really isn't a separation. They are interested in us. There's a part of us that might have been them at one point, you were saying, right? That they used to be look more human-like, the greys in particular. Yep, yep, absolutely. I've heard this from a number of contactees and actually had my own experience with them. I was very obsessed, like, who are these greys? Who are these greys? Are they time travelers from our future? Or, you know, are they, yeah. Where do they come from? And I had a weird experience during meditation where I saw a human-looking male you know, just a normal looking guy. And then it sh started shifting from image to image to image, like flipping through a deck of cards and okay. slowly turned to a gray. And I had the message that this is genetic damage. And this is what many contactees have told me. And, um, like radiation? Like we. Yep. They went through some sort of disaster, a is war, that... a chemical right. war, or a nuclear war. Right. Or uh, actually, you know, did their own genetic manipulation to do space travel and lost this ability to reproduce and have emotions. So I think they are essentially human. And this sort of explains why they're so able to, you know, genetically hybridize with us. Uh, but they're, they're humans like us and some are very emotional. Some aren't. And that's caused a problem with them. Like one guy, the guy who was cured of his kidney stones, um, he had an encounter and he's taken on board and the gray introduces herself as Nelda. She says, my name is Nelda. I'm the highest ranking female on the ship. I'm the commander. <laughs> I thought that was just an interesting it is. detail. And she says, I just want you to know we've done our, finished our work with you. And aren't you happy? And uh, the guy says, no, I'm mad as hell. And uh, she seemed confused. Nelda seemed confused and says, what's mad? What's hell? <laughs> <laughs> and he explained it to her patiently and she's like oh oh i see you know oh we do have a lot of problems with human emotions we're very sorry if you were in our position you would do the same thing we've done uh so they i think especially early on you know because this is a largely a, unprecedented i think for humanity uh these large numbers of abductions this is i think the ets have been around for a while for millennia yeah. Mm -hmm. But but ever since the 1950s, we've had enormous numbers of people talk, talking about missing time and grays and being taken on board. Right. And a lot of these early accounts uh, were scary. And I think that's lessening. Um, people are still being taken on board. Uh, but uh, I think they're beginning to understand a little bit more about us. Okay. And initially, they had a little bit of a hard time. Uh, and they do have a plan. And the, no compassion in the beginning and yeah. it's been a little bit better because of all the healing that's taken place. Now, I have a question. I'm so curious. You know, I've, I've seen the film where you have this UFO just just 
hauling butt out of the ocean in these underwater bases. Is this a different race? Uh, with the underwater stuff, I don't know for sure. Um, I think okay, that's, a good um, <laughs> that's honest. Uh, that's fine. So we don't so question mark there uh, because it, it kind of feels like to me that they might have, um, you know, not not different agenda. Maybe they also want to be helpful and study us. But but it um, yeah, but it I, could also be another race. I talked to one lady who is having you know, a lot of ghost experience. She's kind of a fit, spiritual medium, I guess you would call it. And one day she's started doing automatic writing and she's like who's this and he's like, introduced himself as kevin <laughs> and she could see a gray alien and uh and the gray kevin. alien color <laughs> kevin, kevin the gray, gray alien. alien okay and he explained that they live in the oceans they live in the oceans and that they've been here for a long time and they're contacting people who are able to listen to them they're benevolent they don't have weapons they don't need them and uh, they're in very large numbers and have been watching us for a very long time and are contacting people who will listen. And uh, that was a gray. I talked to another person who was pulled into, I mean, he was abducted from Catalina Island, which is a huge hot spot here off the Southern California coast. There's lots of USO activity here, objects coming in and out of the water in large numbers. Uh, probably yeah. on, oof, one of the largest hot spots in the world. And he was abducted out of Avalon Cove, <laughs> Catalina Island, and taken to an underground or undersea base. And he saw what we would term the praying mantis type. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It was benevolent. He wasn't scared yeah. in the least. He's a medical doctor. <laughs> and uh, the praying mantis was the main was the was a doctor. No, or the, 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 guy, the, the witness. The witness. Yeah. Okay. Well, at the time he was a kid, but he became a doctor. Okay. And it fits the pattern that I see uh, of people who are being contacted. Like one guy, he was in the hospital to have surgery for his heart. He had a hole in his heart. He's having a lot of pain and trouble breathing. The doctor's like, you have a hole in your heart. We need to do surgery. And in walks this guy, human looking, and uh, says, I will heal you. We need to heal you. We are very interested in your work in electronics. He's an inventor. He's an electronics inventor. And they said, you need to continue your work. It's very important. And they healed him. And the doctors come in and do his, the imaging. And they're like, well, this is curious. <laughs> he became the <laughs> miracle patient of you know, the hospital. And they're like, wow, you're not. Because she's like, I'm breathing much better. You know, I do more imaging. You know, I think it's gone. You know, and uh, they're like, well, no, we already did. And they're like, no, 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 no. You have to look again. Uh, and they couldn't oh. find the hole in his heart yeah well so to tell me this pattern that you this is your assessment um that the people that um you know there's this you're thinking well we talked about the family lines genetic could be they're interested in genetic type of things but the ones that don't that they're interested in them as people like specific people what is the thing that you find that holds the commonality with that yeah actually i think they probably contact a lot of people um one in 40 was a quote i heard from j allen Hynek, the blue book guy and i thought no yeah. way no way yeah. that's too many i would know an abductee and i did turned out i did i didn't have to ask 40 people and and the do you, think, do you think so do you think it's more than that it's probably more than that in it yeah it's at least that i know a guy who thinks it's probably everybody <laughs> and he's a you know in a position to know he's a contactee uh, but mm -hmm. I don't know if that's true, but gosh, it wouldn't surprise me. And the Roper poll, the Roper organization, they do surveys. They tackled the UFO subject and did a whole survey to find out how common UFO abductions were. They found one in 50. That's high. So I do think this is very common. But yeah, they definitely seem to contact people who are doing good work for humanity in some capacity. Mm -hmm. and like musicians uh, everyone loves music it raises your vibration it it's very great. popular and uh look at john lennon just recently yeah. miley cyrus <laughs> demi lovato have both stepped forward i'm um, like yeah we've had encounters and uh, right gosh and th it? those are the same people that are also usually creative types which i'm creative um you know as well i used to own an ad agency uh for 25 you know, years and uh, that's, yeah. So, uh, but you look at creative people that are, um, 
you know, artists, musicians, whatever, uh, and so many uh, people that are creative, like you're creative, you're a writer, uh, they cross over and they don't just do one thing, they're just creative in general, but they're usually open to the paranormal and they're also open to spirit. So I find they also have a lot of spirit activity too, because they're, because I think they're just seeing what's already there and other people just don't tap into it. So I think they're, um, uh, the creative people are a different breed a little bit. They're a little bit more open. So I think they're able to contact, but you might be right. They may be contacting everybody, but they're just not getting the message. They just don't per perceive that or understand that or remember that. Yeah. And as far as the amnesia aspect and missing time, um, people wonder what that is and like, why yeah. would they do do that? And I think one of the reasons is to reduce the trauma because sometimes they do, you know, uh, physical examinations no one really likes going to the doctor it's you know no one wants to be probed or you know have be injected and all this stuff and it can be traumatizing and in some cases i think many cases they like well we don't want to hurt this person let's just you know put this you know in a place where they won't remember um, there's no reason let's just anesthetize them and uh, uh, so they won't go have to go through the trauma and people mm -hmm. um, are cured all the time, I think, and never know it. They just don't know it. Wow. Um, yeah, you're right. How would they know? But it, it makes me think about Men in Black when he holds the flash up and it goes flash and they all don't remember, but is the forgetter mechanism. <laughs> so yep. they don't remember all that. So they don't experience the trauma. And then of course it leaks through with some people, but then like you said, that some memories are not traumatic. And you said yep. you've had some that are not traumatic too. Yeah, I, I, I I'll honestly tell you that I have flip flopped a little bit because of the whole, you know, driving down the road at night and they you're, they pull you up into a craft and it's like, could you could you ask permission, <laughs> please? And uh, no, no one, no, get that needle away. One guy I talked to in England, he's not happy with the grays because he woke up on board a UFO and this tall mean looking grave sticks a needle into his head and it hurt bad and he screamed stop right. please stop stop right. stop and he wouldn't and then he started letting out a stream of curses like you bleep and bleep 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 and the gray didn't bat an eye and just kept doing it and treated him like a lab rat and uh, that makes me it breaks my heart i'm like it please is, yeah, why would you do that tell tell him right. You know, if you're a good doctor, you will tell a person what you're right. doing. Right. Uh, so, I'm, yeah, I flip up a little bit on this. Uh, but overall, yeah, I think there's a bell curve. But mm -hmm. ET behavior falls under the same umbrella as human behavior. Yep. But I have to tell you, when someone's kidnapped on Earth, it doesn't end well. Rarely is this good news. <laughs> and, no, that's true. Uh, and when you're kidnapped by, you know, an ET, yes, it can be traumatic. You don't know it, but they've just healed you of, you know, cancerous polyps and, and yeah. or, or uh, you know, a brain tumor. One guy had that experience and uh, and they told him, well, we have to do this. And he's like, why, why, why? This, he says, you have brain tumors. He's like, I'm not sick, I'm not sick. And they're like, well, you would become sick. We need to do this. It's all the future. This is what's gonna happen. So we're gonna correct it. Yeah. I got that. Oh, uh, so that would be that would happen. Well, you think about all of us as human. I mean, at some point, our organs are going to uh, there's going to be a problem somewhere. <laughs> and what did you say that uh, earlier you were talking about uh, that they our life expect expectancy as human has almost doubled. So yeah. you said that, that was something that came up in one of your cases to see how long we could live. Yeah, it wasn't one of my personal cases, but uh, yeah, this guy from Florida, Jim. Uh, they told him why they were contacting him because of his genetic propensity to live a long time. They were very interested in that. There's a case from RD6 Killer Clark, one of my favorite researchers. She's put out like three books. She's somewhat new to the field, but really doing some fabulous work interviewing people in indigenous cultures. She started with Native Americans. She herself is Native American, but uh, was interviewing all kinds of people. She interviewed this one guy who was a bicycle racer you know, on a, and uh, he was taken on board and uh, they upgraded him. <laughs> he, he started winning all these races. <laughs> well, they made him faster and stronger, faster. Smarter. Serious? Yeah, people oh are taken on board and their IQ, 
goes way up off the charts and they start becoming very interested in mathematics and are good at it and go to the head of their class. So they are very yeah. people mentally and upgrade them physically. So people might not necessarily be sick. Like one of my favorite cases, John Hunter Gray, uh, who was a very award-winning social worker, had a abduction by Gray ETs in Richland Center, Wisconsin. And he recalled it spontaneously afterwards, didn't go under hypnosis, he just remembered, he and his son, and it wasn't a particularly pleasant experience. They, they were laid out, physically examined, and injected with needles. It wasn't painful. It wasn't super traumatic. It was very clinical, is how he described it. He, he wasn't terrified, but it wasn't like, you know, fun. <laughs> but right. afterwards, you know, he wasn't sick. Uh, afterwards, uh, he started to notice all of these very interesting developments. He was a heavy smoker. He suddenly had no desire to smoke. He... His cuts started healing very quickly. He used to get the flu every year, stopped getting the flu. He grew t three inches, two inches. Mind you, he's middle-aged. Mm -hmm. his, so his feet grew like three sizes. <laughs> Gosh. Uh, uh, he started having five o'clock shadow. His fingernails were growing and all at a super rapid rate. Regeneration. Uh, yeah, so they upgraded him. And John Mack talked about this. One guy, Jim Sparks, he's had a couple of healings. They healed him a flu once, and they took him on board once, and they said, and they gave him a gift. And it was these containers filled with this black goo. Yeah. It stunk. He's like, this is a gift? Ew, what's this? <laughs> um, it's not much of a gift, right? And they said, oh, we removed this from your lungs. You need to stop smoking. <laughs> oh, my gosh, you're kidding. I love that case because another guy had the same exact experience. Experience. The only difference, they said the same thing. The only difference I could find was the shape of the container. They gave him the black goo. Said, "This is a gift to you." And it was that. That's the wow. And so you can't. These people don't know one another, so they couldn't make this up, right? They're like probably on different sides of the planet. Yeah. Yeah. And it's so such a bizarre experience. It's, I'm like, really, it's so identical there's just no way that this could be you know confabulated or made up or fantasized uh wow. it's just well, extraordinary well gosh I, I tell you what and you know I, I would love to have you come back and discuss the ndes versus because i know you've studied a lot on that topic too the near-death experience and the similarities of alien encounters and a lot of the after effects are very similar and i find this incredibly interesting uh, that there that there are so many similarities and there are times i do know like with dr kenneth ring that some have both and why is that it might be back to that interest again that you know uh, apparently there's different interests for different types of people you know for different different reasons uh, like we talked about before that some of these are information in the telephone we need to talk to someone so apparently <laughs> we're giving downloads so, you know and keep that experiment up you know we're giving you the information what was that movie uh gosh a uh, famous black and white movie with klaus in it and uh, uh what is it not my planet earth where the, the day the earth stood still the day the earth stood still that is exactly that and he comes <laughs> in with a little boy timmy and he's telling his son is the mother and they realize the mother and dad oh my god this guy's an alien and he he's the one where the ships landed in, in the town area. Okay, it's him. And he's given them all these advanced information. They work on these advanced techniques every day. And I was like, that is so cool. I want a teacher just like that. No, no. <laughs> I very mean, true. It, it was very similar, but it, that what a, a, a phenomenal movie that was ahead of its time. Because in some cases, they are teaching people things. Yeah, that makes me wonder about, you know, we're talking about inspiration and where do these people get these ideas? Like Star Trek. Mm -hmm. Star Trek got so many things right. Remember the communicators, which we actually have now? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we absolutely. have those. <laughs> Dematerialization and materialization and, uh, and beaming people up. Uh, I think that's... Um, I think we've had like an international galactic <laughs> airport for for a long time. You know, this is, you know, other places this is going on. So, so much of it, you wonder what is actually channeled. You know, you look at um, 
any of the, um, you know, Battlestar Galactica, Star Wars, you know, that's why people, I think, gravitate to it because maybe there's a memory there. So you, then you get wondering, okay, what's a past life? What's a future life? What's a life? What's a, I think it's a little bit deeper than that. I don't think it's linear at all. Yeah, I don't, past lives might be a misnomer as well. (laughs) Simultaneous lives is, I, I think, becoming a more popular uh, idea when it comes to past lives, which is I, fascinating. I, I agree. So you've had multiple, I don't know, medieval times, multiple, or you're a starship commander, multiple, and you could, you know, and it could be, there's so many lives that we don't even know about or are different dimensions. So I think that that's, that the soul is so big. Why, you know, why, why limit it? So, I mean, this is an amazing topic because I don't think it is separate. The more I look into it, certainly don't have the experiences that you do, as far as the you know dedicated your whole life but to me it's um you know we probably are part of the alien we probably are the alien race so uh <laughs> yep. from the dna from way back i mean really i mean we we don't know so i i think that there uh i think it's so much bigger and i think if we eliminated the fear and just had a natural curiosity and to look into this i think that consciousness would shift just alone by that and you uh you know, exposing some of these truths, they're, they're actual truths that you've looked into and it's, it's commonality, commonality, commonality uh, that just can't be duplicated and made up by complete strangers around the world. Um, hopefully we'll um, give people comfort that it's all okay. <laughs> We're all in this together. And, and also like with the, um, what was it? Uh, Star Trek, they had the Galactic Federation and you had all these different species, but even on that, it was all about peace and harmony because I don't think people here or other species that are interested in us want us to continue to hurt ourselves, violence, uh, you know, mess up mother nature or to, you know, blow, blow the planet up. I don't think that's in anyone's best interest. So I think that uh, it's, it's really a, uh, a, theme here even with the extraterrestrials it sounds like with harmony and unity yeah yeah i've looked into this because i can't find any cases where ets have money and even as as far as government uh no no. they're they're self-governing ets are very telepathic they're very cooperative with each other everything's very much a, a cooperation mentality uh so they don't need you know, they don't, jails, <laughs> they, they don't have problems with crime because everyone's, you know, the true cause of crime is lack of education. You know, and people are, are struggling to survive and there's a lot of fear and that's where that comes from. Right. Uh, if, if we would just share, I mean, there's enough food for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> there's enough of everything for everyone. And right. again, I think this division in our planet and the problems we're having are being fostered by perhaps people who don't have our best interests in mind. Uh, and yeah. uh, the powers uh, that be, whatever that is. I mean, you could yeah. go down that line, the whole conspiracy, but yeah, probably not. But I'm I not do- too worried about it. I think we have the ETs who are watching over <laughs> us. We have the enlightened masters. The and, angels, uh, you know. The angels. And God. Those, those are the ones that are in charge, not... The, you know, our governments who are withholding information and covering up yeah, and the archangels, you know, disclosure is coming. I'm telling you, uh, our government is being forced into disclosure uh, because it's this is a subject that you can no longer hide. Like try to hide the sun and the moon. You can't. That's what I think Buddha said that there are three things yeah, you can't hide. The sun, the moon and the truth. Like right on. <laughs> Exactly. You know, you're you're right. And I think that it, it's about people stepping forward and feeling confident that they can speak about their experiences or at least looking to areas without judgment. And that's one of the reasons I created this uh, this channel. So we could discuss these things and and have fun, you know, during you know along the process. But these are real things that are occurring. OK, but so before we end, one last thing, it would not be proper unless I brought it up. <laughs> Big, <laughs> Bigfoot. Now, Bigfoot is associated a lot with when people see these big, you know, UFO ships, they'll usually see a Bigfoot. So is so Bigfoot. Is that is that a 3D holographic thing that they're putting out and a why? 
And if not, then are they, you know, what is, are they watchers like you hear people say, or they hear just watching why all of a sudden when someone sees a UFO, boom, there's a Bigfoot. Why do they go hand in hand? Have you figured that one out? Not entirely. Um, I have to tell you, most people who have a UFO encounter don't encounter Bigfoot. Most people who have a Bigfoot encounter don't encounter a UFO. But these two, I'll call them phenomena, but they're just things, do sometimes intersect perfectly. And seriously, I mean, people have seen Bigfoot going on board a UFO or on board a UFO or coming off of a UFO or at the same time of a UFO encounter. So I'm like, are they ETs? You know, what's going on here? I, um, I looked into Bigfoot and uh, found out like, well, we know they've been around for millennia, hundreds of years. We've got accounts stretching back well over 100 and oral traditions from Native Americans and other indigenous cultures mm -hmm. stretching back much farther than that. Uh, by all accounts, they are intelligent, sentient, as we think of it. You know, we think, oh, we're, we're the intelligent people on this planet. Well, don't forget the dolphins. <laughs> don't yeah, forget the dolphins. It's true. Yeah, and, and Bigfoot, yes, they are sentient. People talk to them. There's a lot of interest in Bigfoot right now. Uh, people have had healing encounters. People have been rescued by Bigfoot from being lost or snake bite or what have you. And they'll carry you back to your camp or, and, or physically heal you. Um, you got to be kidding. Really? Uh, okay, uh, we got to do a whole thing on Bigfoot on things like this. I have never heard of this. And I have, I have, you know, watched and seen and followed. I have no, really, this is yeah, amazing. Yeah, I had my own Bigfoot encounter, by the way. <gasps> really? Okay, you're, okay, uh, you're, okay, you're cool a meter. Just <laughs> I already thought it was way up there, but go, you had, really? What happened? Yeah, yeah. This was actually a lady who had showed me a UFO. Seriously, it's like, I'm like, if you're seeing him all the time, I want to see him. And uh, she did. Most beautiful encounter I've ever had, this go gorgeous sphere of golden light. I mean, it was oh, breathtaking. And she started having problems with Bigfoot. She's like, Bigfoot's around my house. Oh, my God. Her son saw it, her roommate. Uh, I saw the footprints. I saw where it broke the branch. And uh, she was like, I think I know where it lives. It's not far from my house. She lived on in the national LA National Forest, or on the edge of it, in Acton. Southern California. We have a huge, huge forest here. And uh, so I looked into the area. I'm like, oh my gosh, there's a history of Bigfoot encounters in this area. <laughs> she didn't know that. She's you know, not really a reader at that time. She wasn't. And uh, she is now. She's super smart. <laughs> oh my God. But uh, So we went out exploring. She's like, I'll show you where he lives. And we went out there with cameras and sound equipment and, and drove off down dirt road into the forest. And it was dusk. I remember this vividly. And uh, I got out of the car and I was walking around to the front of the car. She got out and she was opening the back door to get out the sound equipment when roar, this Bigfoot yeah. roars. Oh my gosh. And, I'm like, oh! and she just turns white <laughs> and she slams the door and jumps into the car and slams the door. Or no, she's not quite yet. She, she stood up and slammed the back door. It's like, did you hear that? And I'm like, oh, did I hear that? I first looked up, I thought it was a jet coming over us. <gasps> I mean, this was a roar like you've never heard before. Like probably you felt it in your chest even. Yeah, I did. Mind you, I've been at the zoo and the lion roared right next to me. Oh. And, and I lived in Topanga Canyon. We had um, cougars and cougars. wildcats and and I've heard them. And so, and mm -hmm. I'm a big bear. I love bears, you know. So I, I, I know my animals pretty good. Um, and uh, heard, heard it roared again. And this time I could triangulate, I guess, where it was coming from and it was close. It was right in this really densely, densely brushy area. Very forested, very, I mean, you couldn't travel through there. It was just, the terrain was imp impassable. And uh, when it roared the you know, second or maybe a third time, she says it roared three times. I'm pretty sure it was twice because I've trained myself to be a careful observer. Uh, but at any rate, she slams the door. She's in the passenger. She's like, get in, get in right now. I'm like, no, let's stay, let's stay. And she's like, no. Fine, um, you know, I had to capitulate. She wanted to go, so what am I going to say? <laughs> uh, well, did so, it warn you, or what was that about? You think? I, th uh, um, she was in telepathic contact with it. It liked her. <laughs> it wanted to meet her, and she was afraid. So I, oh, I got uh, it. So I'm like, all right, let's go. She ended up moving. <laughs> uh, okay. She now lives in Australia. I love wow. her. Love her dearly. She became such a good friend. 
Wow. Uh, but, but yeah, Bigfoot is intelligent. It can disappear. It can travel yeah, to other that. dimensions. I've heard and, that. Uh, it's, it's a real thing. It's getting a lot of attention right now. They're the guardians of our planet. That's what I felt like. Yeah, kind of like, do you remember the 80s series, The Highlander? And they had, yeah. the, they had the watchers in it that would have watched them. They're kind of like our watchers where they just observe. They're not supposed to get involved. That's how I, I've understood it. But they're not. I mean, you could get technical and say they're not really up this planet. But then you could trace back our history and look at the alien contact. And you could say, are we? So I, I can't, you know, big question mark there. Yep. Still not sure <laughs> myself, but I know they're real. <laughs> that is an amazing encounter. So do you still have a recording of that? No, we weren't able to record. She, we had literally just wow. opened the door and lifted out. The, and she had some good equipment, too. Um, I was pretty disappointed. But, yeah, the evidence oh. for Bigfoot is overwhelming. Do your homework. You will see. Yeah, it is. yeah there's even a lot near me. There was, it was so funny. My husband and I, and we'll, 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 I know we're closing out on this, but my husband and I were watching something. It was like, I don't know, it was um, hunting in the woods. I don't really remember what it was, the show. And it wasn't that long ago, two or three months ago. And there was a guy in there talking about, yeah, he goes hunting and his, and his, and his dog, Dixie Cup or whatever it goes with this little dog. Mm -hmm. And they said they see them all the time and they kind of have a agreement. And, and, and then he's saying, yeah, here's a print, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, and he, he said, this has been going on for years and he just has an understanding. And then I we're like, where is this? I mean, the guy was really casual about it. Uh, just some old coot, you know, and he, <laughs> And, and it was in the place I was born in Hickory, North Carolina. I'm like, oh, great. Terrific. <laughs> and it was close. Yeah, he goes, yeah, I got, they see me. I see them. I go, you know, and he's evidence and everything. He just seems to be, he's just been around it so much that um, it's really weird. They have an understanding. So uh, maybe because he lives there. So maybe they have to, you know, if he lives near there, they have to kind of make some kind of agreement. Mm -hmm. Well, look. Preston, you're amazing. When you have your 28th book, um, which is, you know, please come back on because you can talk about more cases. This is an endless subject because this has to do with the universe and what's possible, other realms. I mean, this is just a massive topic uh, and you are a wealth of information and a delight. And I could talk to you forever because you're amazing. So thank you so much for, uh, you know, coming on and being with us again. You're terrific. Oh, thank you, Tamara. I feel the same about you. Yeah, this was fun. Yeah. It was so fun. It was so much fun. This is like, this is real me. This is like the little, I was funny. I was cute with my husband. I go, how old am I? He goes, you're 12. You're a 12 year old boy. <laughs> <laughs> That's the topics I like, like dinosaurs and you're <laughs> So this is like super fun for me. So thank you so much. And then I hope to see you really soon. Yeah, definitely. I can't wait. All right. All right. Thank you. <laughs> my pleasure.